Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mukunamana YouTube with another modeling video. And today we'll be reviewing and demonstrating the use of Tamiya Diorama Texture Paint Soil Effect. I didn't think much of these because I just thought it was uh, sand mixed in with paint and they had different colors. Though, and in this picture that I took in Shizuoka, Japan, when I saw an example of all the different paints painted on a plaque, they all had different appropriate textures for different jobs, from snow, grass actually having grass bits, and the soil bits, it actually looked really, really nice that had the really fine ground sand to some lumps. I felt like playing around with it. It is a bit expensive at... Uh, almost twenty dollars but at a hundred mil it's uh, quite a bit there and you could do a couple of very large dioramas to a few small and we will uh, brush on some bit on a flat bit of card and I'll show off uh, an effective way of uh, applying it on a diorama with other uh, products for a fairly interesting and believable effect now this is acrylic based uh, it can wash off while wet with water or acrylic thinner, it can be thinned down with water or acrylic thinner. Once dried, it can be removed with lacquer thinner. There's actually very extensive directions uh, written on the side, which is uh, very worthwhile reading. You can apply it very, very thickly to create depth and uh, dimension, which I'll show you a way around that to save some of the product. It reckons it can be worn away and chipped back to a white surface which uh, more has to be applied as uh, maintenance. I'm not sure I like the sound of that so we'll look at uh, sealing it with uh, clear and giving it a wash and um, making it as interesting as possible. Uh, for obvious reasons it says do not apply, uh, put through an airbrush. It will uh, definitely damage your airbrush. And uh, probably last and not least it says could form damage on a paintbrush but we'll be using a fairly stiff old uh, wide cheap brush instead of uh, a pointy brush that I normally use for painting. Got the actual product here they reckon that they use clays in it which mixes with the acrylic that is quite interesting it looks to be a very thick paste could uh, definitely be used with some watering down. I'm only going to stir the top layer so wait, we go nice and deep and it's definitely very very uh, gritty and mixing it up there's all sorts of uh, different uh, textures and sizes of uh, dirt and debris and whatnot and we'll even utilize what's on the needle. Don't want to waste any. And we'll just paint it on a bit of plastic. So, putting it on really, really thickly. And then we can dab it around, stretch it out. Some of the areas could be nice and thin, some of the areas could be thickish. I think the idea is you have thick areas and thin areas, and it goes on a bit like uh, waves. and just uh, move the texture around to whatever you like the look of with the brush. So that looks pretty interesting. We'll wait 24 hours, see how it dries and if it's solid in the thick areas of the thin areas and how easily it gets damaged. Now so that we don't damage the paintbrush, uh, this is a paintbrush cleaner but a normal jar of thinner will do. I'm going to dip the brush in lacquer thinner and wipe it back with a tissue instead of uh, other conventional methods of uh, cleaning and if you use dabbing instead of strokes or uh, just roughing it about dabbing the paint on with the uh, paintbrush uh, damage should not occur to your paintbrush whatsoever and um, doesn't seem the follicles or hairs are uh, messing up and it hasn't lost its point so yeah airbrush oh, hand painting maintenance look after your brushes man now first I want to talk about uh, the diorama that I'm going to be doing now normally if you just got a flat piece of card and you just 
apply texture and paint it's not going to look very good it's going to look very uninteresting and even though that this paint has thickness and volume and you just add it to a flat surface it's going to be very unrealistic very uninteresting just something wrong especially the larger the scale of the object like 72nd or your uh, science fiction 1 100 144 stuff particularly again the models but even if you're looking at military uh, most of the time ground is quite hilly uh, quite uneven and what I did with this base if you look sideways there's all these white patches this is two part putty I just used uh, milli putt but other products can be uh, used it's a lot cheaper like uh, wood putty or plaster or whatever mixed it, it uh, broke off very small bits I'm talking about tiny balls the size of a pea uh, placed it in each bit and just uh, moved it around randomly and had small mounds and just had it uh, ever so from a mil to half a mil high at some areas and low in other areas just to have an uneven ground. Uh, ideally if you've got a Gundam or a tank or something you'll put the actual unpainted model on it to uh, give it tracks or a place where it's actually going to place in so it looks like it's sinking into the soil gives it a little more realism if you want larger uh, rocks and pebbles I've uh, got these that I've uh, collected and sift from um, ground and sand and dirt and some uh, final rocks so what I'm going to do is apply some uh, PVA glue on the surface of this just by using a uh, Q-tip and PVA glue. Uh, very easy, you just uh, dab it on and I will uh, sprinkle the sands on. So uh, very easy, just uh, dab and dab on all over the area. Doesn't have to be too thick, just uh, lightly cover the uh, whole area. If you put it on too thin, it might start to dry before you put the sand on. But yeah, that's uh, the general gist. So we've got wet PVA glue all over the place. When applying sand, you always put uh, the largest uh, grit or rocks, followed by the finest. Now since most of it is going to be covered in uh, the texture paint and not sand because normally I'll put a large coarse sand finer finer than the uh, finest uh, put on a lot of primer and paint and that is my texture I'm just going to sprinkle a couple of rocks here in there Now if you don't like how random or where some of the rocks have appeared, you can move them around among the PVA. Like so, so it looks a bit more interesting and somewhat organised. I'm going to use a slightly finer grit. Then the finest grit, and like I said, we're not using much because the texture is going to sit on top of it, but it looks like there's uh, boulders and other effects. Again, with the medium-sized stuff, you can move them around a bit, bury them in the uh, PVA, just give it a bit of uh, a naturalish, randomized pattern instead of just looking like that they've just been slapped on which is exactly what's occurred gonna allow that to dry for 24 hours um, again normally the finer sand gets put on top but we'll put on the texture paint and see how it turns out uh, this is not a formalized tutorial this is the first time I'm using this stuff so it's just seeing how it comes out using my methods of diorama building so this is my dry piece from the use of the Tamiya Texture Diorama Paint now, on a flat surface it's pretty interesting and it works really well on something quite small like a wargaming base once your surfaces get big it will be quite repetitive, quite boring those lumps and mounds is what was built up by uh, brush strokes now I mentioned maintenance and repairing as I've rubbed my fingers and scratched into it underneath does get a bit white-ish 
probably which is uh, the results of the sand and whatnot. But it doesn't look uh, too bad. Um, nowhere near as bad as when you PVA glue sand onto a base and move that off. But with enough layers of paint and clear coats and whatnot, shouldn't be too much of a hassle. But uh, yeah, quite impressive. We're going to apply some to this base. So not too hard. Already pretty much been stirred. And um, just going to get some on the brush and apply by just colouring it in with the initial colour. Right, the easiest way to do the edges was to uh, put a, a large mound and then spread it out along the lines. And then um, I'm going to do the same thing, pick up a, a large amount from the pot and just colour in the centre. Now, just working around and contouring it around the detail. Now, if this stuff, it is quite possible to just build a giant mound purely out of this paint and then sculpt it. Though realistically, as expensive as it is and how you can use cheaper fillers such as uh, putties and sands and other stuff, it's not quite necessarily. Uh, even though it's completely covered in, I'm putting one more mound on and I'm just going to move it around just to add volume and shape around the existing mounds. Just give it some interest in the build up areas and just make sure it doesn't look uniform or anything. And more or less, that's pretty easy. And I'll just uh, demonstrate the build up process on uh, the second hexagon. So I've got a, a large mount on my brush and I just add it on right in the corner here and then I'm just merely moving it around with the brush and I'm trying to do it as neatly as possible and just getting it to touch the end without making it go over. And that's pretty much the process if you want to do it super neat. Normally in a diorama you don't have to be as neat. I've just got this uh, complex shape going on. And that's pretty much the absolute uh, gist to it. Yeah, but it's tricky to work with. But that's it uh, completely applied. Looks quite uh, interesting. Especially with the glitter. And yet, as a finished model, still a tad interesting going to plan to do more painting, uh, a bit of a wash and flock to have a complete uh, scale model look. So I wouldn't call this completely done unless it was heavily flocked. So what I'm going to do is load up some lighter colour sands, a couple of tones, dust it on around the place and tomorrow we will uh, wash and seal the whole thing. And we've got some variation to colour over the soil. All I did was get two to three different type of uh, browns and flesh. And just uh, quite randomly coloured and shaded in some of the areas of uh, the dirt. Giving it some variation of colour. Uh, a wash and then flock. And here's the conclusion to my work. Now you can see to the left is the original test piece. Just uh, it piled up. And applied, nothing else extra. And with these uh, bases, they've been um, elevated with putty, uh, textured with more sand. The texture paint applied, bits of different colour paint uh, dusted on via airbrush. I use about two, three different colours to create little swirls and different patches of colour on different sides of uh, the hilly areas of definition. Very light black wash applied that's just getting an existing um, wash and thinning it even further and just lightly uh, brushing it on and finally PVA glue and flock of a similar color it turned out to look a bit like a desert uh, the fauna and flora is quite interesting I really like the dead weeds but more or less uh, this is how you can get the texture paint to look quite interesting on a large base compare with everything just look like that it's so a little bit of playing around. This paint can go a long way. If you're just covering in um, large surfaces in that colour, will come out a bit bland. 
but uh, more or less this is the finish uh, with the extra paint and clear coats on top it's a lot more protected and uh, my recommended version of how to use this particular product thank you very much for watching and as always until next time catch you guys later